Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but this morning I sense a spirit of victory in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. At this time, Elder Dillard is coming with prayer, and following him, Elder Bryce will come with our scripture. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to... We want to, first of all, we want to thank you for being so good to us, 
for waking us up this morning with our health and our strength. Yes, Lord. God, for making a way out of no way. Even some of us that even struggled just to get here into the sanctuary. Oh, yeah. God, we say thank you. Thank you. We thank you for, for your goodness and your mercy toward us. And, and how you watch over us and keep us every day. How you keep us, how you keep our families, oh God. And, and even the jobs that we go to, God, we, we thank you. We thank you for our children, our husbands, and our wives. And, and, and we thank you for our families, oh God. And, 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 and we thank you even for food to eat, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we, we, we thank you, oh God, for just everything and how you provide for us. God, you are our Father, and we just love you on today. And so all of us together, we just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And oh God, even as we come today before your presence, with thanksgiving in our hearts, we ask, O oh God, we beseech thee, O oh God, that you would move by your spirit in this place. In the name of Jesus, Lord, look upon those that are on the sick and shut-in list, even right now. Those that, are, that couldn't make it to church, those that are sick in their bodies, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those that have special needs, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those that have things on the altar before you, O oh God. The family members we have on the altar before you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you would move by your spirit. And, and oh God, that your anointing would destroy every yoke of bondage in the lives of your people. We thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus. And so God, we just ask that you would just come into this place. Come into this service. Touch every singer. Touch every testimony. Touch every voice, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Touch the musician, oh God. Touch the praise team, oh God. Touch the pastor, oh God. Give him strength right now in the name of Jesus. Look upon the bereaved families, oh God. Touch them right now. Encourage their hearts. We thank you for this service. Move by your spirit, oh God. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. We receive deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way today. Have your way today in the name of Jesus. And we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his, only, his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. And it's gotten so good, I've got to throw these last three verses in there. All right. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Yeah. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Yeah. But ye are not in the flesh. Let me say that again. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Last verse, and if Christ be in you. The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. The word of God is richly blessed. Can you say amen? amen. Let us continue in the spirit of worship and in the spirit of victory as we'll be in the hands of our co-pastor. Um, join in. Worship with us. Come on, put your hands together. Who's 
report where you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of report will you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of way back in the archives and got that one. But the Bible instructs us and tells us whose report will you believe? Amen. No matter what your circumstance is, no matter what your situation, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. And his report says I'm healed. His report says I'm filled. His report says I have freedom. And his report says, I have victory. Come on and put those hands together. Give the Lord a praise. God God. 
Come on, let's do that again. Happy. you may be seated. Praise God. You know, I understand that there was a fight televised last night. I don't know anything about that. It's not football. What can I say? But what I do know is we are in a spiritual fight. But guess what? I read the end of the book, the book, yes. and we have the victory yes. through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We may be going through things right now, but we have the victory. Jesus has secured the victory, hallelujah, through his blood. At this time, Sister Wyrick is coming with the voice of hospitality. Good morning. Good morning. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by himself. We have come today with a thankful heart and with a spirit of worship to bless our Lord. On behalf of our pastors, our first ladies, and the entire Pentecostal church family, we welcome you here today and we thank God for allowing you to let him lead you yes. this way. Yes. This is a wonderful place of worship at the First Pentecostal Family Worship Center. Join us, join with us in praising and glorifying our God and Savior. We feel the presence of our Heavenly Father here right now. Whatever you need, you can find at the cross. Whatever you need, you can find in Jesus. Whether it be deliverance, whether it be a healing, whether it be peace of mind, whatever you need, you can find in Jesus. Thank you for coming. Enjoy your worship time with us. And do come again. And right now, the First Pentecostal family is going to give you a very special welcome. First Pentecostal Family Worship Center for family and friends. First Pentecostal Family Worship Center, welcome, come on in. Receive blessings, healing, and more when you walk through the door. Your life will be changed. You will never be the same. Oh, 
changing lives, changing lives for the better. Through the word of God, first and foremost, the family worship center. Welcome, please come again. Welcome. Praise God. Praise God. You are indeed welcomed here. At this time, Voices of Pentecost is coming to bless us with the ministry of music. Let's continue in, in the spirit of worship and in the spirit of victory.
I am. Hallelujah. Kid builders, you are dismissed at this time. Praise God. I came this morning with a spirit of expectancy. And something happened when I came through the doors. Something inside me stirred, got me all excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knowing that we have the victory through Jesus Christ, knowing all that he has done for us, knowing that he is here with us now, ready to meet us where we are at. So I want you to be, if you haven't already, be preparing your heart because the Holy Ghost wants to, to drop something in your heart this morning. He wants to take the message that the Father has given to our pastor and drop nuggets into our heart, something that is for you, something that will change you so that when you leave this afternoon, when you go out those doors, you will not go out the same way you came in. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, pastor is coming with the message, the message that our Father God had given to him for us. I'd like to ask all of you to stand at this time and let us receive him as he comes. Come on, let's bless the Lord on today. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is God. It is he that hath made us. Oh, I am at the right church today. Hallelujah, am I in the right church today? Hallelujah. Come on, let everything that hath breath. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we bless you. We praise you for your goodness and for your mercy. Because you are the great I am. Lord, we've looked high and we've looked low and we can't find anybody like you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for sending your son for dying on the cross for our, our redemption. We thank you, O oh God, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. God, we hide behind your cross today. There was a time that we needed you. Now is that time. We need you today, O oh God. Stop by here today, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way in our midst, O oh God. There are yet those that are grieving today. But I thank you for the healing, O oh God. I thank you for the comforter is here. I thank you, oh God, that you're sitting right beside us today. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for abundant life today. We thank you for joy unspeakable. We thank you for peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, oh God, for your grace, oh God. It is all sufficient today. God, we thank you, Lord, for your favor, Lord. Hallelujah, for I have favor going in. I have favor going out. I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed coming out. So I bless your name today. I praise your name today. I give you glory today. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on and bless his name. Bless his glorious name. We praise him today and we give him glory. God, let the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God, I thank you for those that have come. Some have come today, oh God, searching, oh God, for a word from you, oh God. Oh God, don't disappoint us today, but send your word, oh God. Let it be fire today in the name of Jesus to burn away, oh God, every ungodly desire. God, every thought, oh God, that is not pure in thy sight. God, in the name of Jesus, have your way, oh God. Come on and give him one more praise. Give the Lord one more praise. Come on and praise him today in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We'll be careful to give your name praise and glory. And honor is thine in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. And we're certainly thankful for being in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to be here. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord. 
Amen. And we thank the Lord for, amen, our pastor and the first lady and to my lovely wife, to all of our elders and ministers. And amen. Missionary Madoff, she did such a wonderful job today. Amen. Exhorting us. Amen. Lifting us up. Amen. In the house of the Lord. And we certainly thank God for all of our guests being here today. Amen. Thank you for coming. Amen. For sharing uh, in the uh, word of God with us on today. And amen. I, I looked up and uh, I saw Sister Dawn and her husband, Brother Dan. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So glad to see them uh, today. Amen. I didn't recognize Sister Dawn. She all dressed up and everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Dawn, she work at the restaurant where I go. Amen. I walk in, they know my order. Amen. Hallelujah. I have, to I have to eat in a hurry, quickly in a hurry. Amen. They have me out of there in 10 minutes. Amen. I'm on my way to Lansing. I don't have time to, amen, to tarry. Amen. But thank the Lord. Amen. But amen. So glad to see you all today and to all of the saints of God. And it's just good to be here today, to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we're going to go into the word of God. I, I'm not going to be before you long, but I want to, to share a word with you on today from the book of Mark. The book of Mark, the 11th chapter is where we're going to be on today, beginning at the 11th verse. The 11th verse. It says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the even time was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. The time of the fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, to the fig tree, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Jumping down to verse number 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye ought against any that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. For a few moments today, we want to simply use the subject, have faith in God. Have faith in God. God. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. It's one that we come to many times when we are dealing with this subject called faith. I had a few trees in my yard that were not growing as they should. Last year, I called in the specialists, True Green. I thought they were the specialists. Lord have mercy. Oh, I shouldn't have said their names. On <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Oh, Lord, I done messed up already. But they came and they said, well, yo, trees are not bringing forth the leaves.
leaves and they're not bringing forth the fruit that they should. So if you will allow us, we will spray now and then we'll spray at the end of the year for three monthly payments of such and such, such and such. And I said, uh, I don't know anything about trees, don't know anything about the leaves, but if you will guarantee me that we're going to bring them back to life, then I will pay you so that you can bring my trees back to life. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Pastor, you weren't supposed to say it anymore. <laughs> and I paid the monies. And then they said, well, we'll do it next year. And I said, okay. And we had a storm last year, and this big old tree in my backyard, it fell down on my ship, and in my back, we had this big ship in the backyard for the kids to play when they were smaller. Amen, I guess it was letting us know that our play days are over with, <laughs> and we no longer have any kids at home to play on the ship. And uh, the gentleman, one of our uh, friends, we, uh, we like to call him a friend. He's always there to take our money. Amen. Not going to call his name, but <laughs> he showed up real quickly and says, I'll get rid of the trees. And he says, I noticed these trees on the side of the house. And I said, yes, I had uh, this company to come and uh, to fertilize the trees. He says, man, those trees are dead. He says, they will never live again. And I says, what? I, he says, they will never live again. I says, I didn't pay my money. And I quickly called them up and told them to cancel for next year. There was no life in the tree. This passage of scripture is a very familiar passage of scripture, and I don't want to get caught up in the tree, but Jesus was trying to show a message to his disciples. He was trying to show a message to the people of God. And the Bible says in that first verse that we read, which was the 11th verse, I read that for a particular reason because Jesus had come into town. And when Jesus came into town, Jesus went directly to the temple. And the Bible says that Jesus did not stay long, but Jesus left. And Jesus went back to Bethany, which was about two miles away from Jerusalem. But Jesus got up early in the morning. And when Jesus got up early in the morning, he says, I need me a fig bar. And the Bible says that Jesus went by the tree and he went by the tree and he saw the leaves and the way that the seasons work. Don't have time to go into all of that today. But when Jesus saw the leaves, it was supposed to be a sign that the figs were going to be on the tree. The Bible says that Jesus, when he saw this fig tree, he stopped and there were no figs on the tree. And the Bible says that Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now you may ask, why would Jesus curse the fig tree? Jesus is supposed to be a savior of the world. He's supposed to be one who loves. But the Bible even tells us in the book of John, the third chapter in the 17th verse, he did not come, hallelujah, to condemn the world. But he came that we might have life. So why would Jesus condemn this tree? Because three years before John the Baptist had told them that the axe is laid at the root. And the tree represented Israel. And he was trying to let them know that you have an opportunity to bring forth fruit. But if you don't bring forth that fruit, I'm going to have to destroy the tree. Then in the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, glory to God, Jesus was there and Jesus gave a parable and he says there was a fig tree and he says that the fig tree was not bringing forth fruit. And the Bible says that they cried unto him and says, don't destroy the fig tree. And he says, I'm going to give you uh, three, two more years and I want you to put some dung around the fig tree. Hallelujah. But if you don't have any fruit after a while, I'm going to have to destroy the fig tree. 
Well, Jesus comes to this place of, the, of, of Jerusalem, and he comes to the temple, and the Bible says that they're having church. They're having church, but on the outside, in the, where the Gentiles would be, my God, where the Gentiles would come and bring the sacrifices, where they would come and offer up sacrifices. There were those that were in the church, and they were taking people's money. They were charging people extra dollars, hallelujah, for doves, because that was the cheapest thing that they could offer up unto God. And they came from a long way, and they didn't want to bring the doves with them. So when they got to the temple, they were expecting to be able to buy a dove so that they can offer a sacrifice unto God. Lord have mercy. When you come into the house of the Lord, you come to offer a sacrifice unto God. But the Bible says that when Jesus looked, the people were playing church. They were more important. They were more worried about the money in their pocket than about changing lives for the better through the word of God. They were more worried about their income, their increase versus changing lives. Don't get stuck on that, but Jesus was trying to show a picture. And so as Jesus shows a picture and Jesus is upset because he's no, he's going back to the temple and he's going to have to turn the tables out. He's going to have to turn them out and says, my house shall not be a house of den and thieves but it shall be a house of prayer. It shall be a place where people are to be delivered and they are to be set free. So Jesus has a little show and tell. Jesus says, well, I don't want to beat them up, so I'm going to get rid of this fig tree. Lord have mercy. So Jesus, Bible says that Jesus curses the fig tree. He curses it and he goes on about it because this tree, he goes up and he examines the tree. And the tree is supposed to have fruit, but the tree only has leaves. Lord have mercy, it is a tree. It is like a church that is going on. A lot of shaking is going on. People are coming into the house of the Lord. They're running around the house. They're singing in the choir. They're testifying, but yet there is no fruit being born. There is no fruit that is coming forth out of our lives. There is no peace. There is no love. There is no gentleness. There is no meekness. There is no temperance. There is no self-control. We are just doing whatever we want to do. We have not disciplined ourselves to seek after the things of God. And he understands and lets us know that if we're going to have the power that we need, we're going to have to seek after the things of God. And so the Bible says that Jesus turns the tables and he turns them out and he's coming back. Lord have mercy. I'm sure the ride was kind of quiet. You know how it was when you were growing up and you were acting up. Hallelujah. And every now and then, mom and dad would have to come through the house. They would come sweeping. Hallelujah. And they would have, they would be like that woman that was on the video this week. Oh, y'all not going to work with me. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. And she was disciplining her child. Lord have mercy. We got a fight going on in the world today. My God, I was at the barber shop the other day and they were saying, should we whip our children or not whip our children? Lord have mercy. That was the dialogue for the day. Hallelujah. But I want you to know that the Bible Bible tells us that if we can get them in control, yeah, hallelujah, if we can cause discipline, if we can cause boundary to come forth for our children, we can spare their lives. Hallelujah. We have a decision. We have a choice as men and women of God. And this is what Jesus was doing. Jesus, oh Lord, have mercy. Missionary Providence stood up over there. Hallelujah. We have a decision and we have a choice to seek after the things of God. And Jesus was trying to get their attention. And so Jesus left. I can imagine the the ride going home. You know how it is after mom and daddy, my gosh, go sweeping through the house, everybody quiet. Hallelujah. If you're ever going to have quiet, it's going to be after discipline has been brought down in the house. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody moving. Everybody's scared to get up. Everybody whispering. Hallelujah. Glory to God because they don't want mom and daddy to get stirred up again. Glory to God. And so can you imagine y'all not working with me on the day? And so Jesus he begins to go, and he begins to go with his disciples. And Peter recognizes, he says, Jesus, there's the tree. There is the tree that you cursed. And Jesus said, yes, that's the tree that I cursed. And he says, it is dried up at the root. I said, oh, that'll preach right there. If you are dried up at the root, there will never be any fruit in your life. I don't care how much you shake, how much you jump, how much you put on your suit, how much you dress up. If there is no life in the root, you are going to dry up. What am I saying? If you have no connection with God, if you are not in relationship with Jesus Christ, you can testify and say, I'm living for Jesus all I want. Hallelujah. But if there 
there is no connection, if there is no development, you're going to not have any fruit. So the Bible says we hasten to the finish line. The Bible says that Jesus cursed it. And when he cursed it, he cursed it at the root. And I thought about opportunity. How that many times God will give us opportunity and we don't use it. And if we don't use that opportunity, he takes that opportunity away. And we don't like to talk about that. We like to say, well, God is a God of mercy and God is a God of love. And he is. But God was looking for his people. Israel, the church. To be doing what God called him to do. And the lesson is not about the fig tree, but the lesson is to show us that we can avoid the calming, uh, the coming of Christ upon our life and taking our opportunity away as he did with the fig tree. And so the reason Jesus says these words, he says, have faith in God. And I said, God, what are you trying to say? And he began to take me through some scriptures that he says that the just shall live by faith. The scriptures that tell us that Jesus prayed for his disciples in John, the 17th chapter. And he told him, he says, I pray for you that your faith fail not. He told us to read the word of God because in reading God's word, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We live by faith. We move by faith. We rise up by faith. We are able to have deliverance and the enemy is speaking to us and he's speaking and there's been a battle even in my life this week. He's speaking fear. He's speaking the things that would cause us to be destroyed. But I heard pastors speaking to us that this is the opportune time for us to receive what the devil has stolen from us. But in order for that to happen, we've got to have faith in God. Not faith in faith, but faith in God. How do we receive faith in God? Through his word. For his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And as I read his word for whatever my situation is, when the devil is saying I'm going to be defeated, I read his word that tells me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I, world, I read his word that tells me that by faith they are able to obtain the great things of God. By faith, when we go through Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we see all of these people, the connection that combines all of them is that the word of God keeps saying by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. And that's what we got to do. We've got to live by faith. That was the transition that Jesus is giving us here today because he says, not let's, let's just don't look at Israel. Let us just don't look at the people. Let's just don't look at the fig tree, but let's look at ourselves. And he says, have faith in God. Because if we really look at our lives, we've got some situations that we need deliverance for ourselves. We've got some situations that we need God to turn around ourselves. We've been trying to figure it out. We've been trying to buy it out. We've been trying to live it out. We've been trying to do everything, cross our T's, dot our I's. We've been trying to, my God, and it seems like it still won't work. He says, quit trying to put your faith in things, put your faith in people, and you've got to put your faith in God. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Verily I say unto you, just reading the scripture, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, verse 23, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. We've got to speak this thing. 
We've got to speak to our mountain. What was the mountain? The mountain was not necessarily a physical mountain, but he was saying that whatever the obstacle is that would cause you to not believe God, you've got to speak to that thing and tell that thing to get out of here because I choose not to believe in the obstacle. I choose to believe in the word of God. And he says, have faith in God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. As a result, he says, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. Oh, there it is. Once we have faith, we've got to begin to speak it. We don't speak it to our neighbor, but we speak it in prayer. We begin to talk to the Father in prayer. We begin to tell him, your word says that I have the victory. Your word says that I am healed. Your word says that I am delivered. Your word says that I am free. Your word says that I have the victory. I believe to, re I be I believe to, to receive your report. Your faith makes you hold. And then he closes it out. He says it's not enough to have prayer. He says, and when you have prayed, forgive if ye ought have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespass. I have written down here in my Bible that the power of forgiveness and the power of healing are the same power. The power of healing and the power of forgiveness is the same power. You release your answer by faith when you forgive. When you forgive, that's when healing comes. Y'all know the story. The story of Job. How Job went through all of these things. Pastor even, even preached it on Wednesday, Job 20 and 15. But then you find him over in Job 42nd chapter. The Bible says that when he prayed for his friends... When he prayed for those who talked about him, when he prayed for those who hurt him. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. You have held on. You have said, I, I can forgive, but some things I just can't let go of. And the Bible says that if you want your healing, if you want your deliverance, you're going to have to let that thing go. You're going to have to give it to God. You're going to have to give it to him because in order to have faith in God, you've got to clear the line. You've got to let everything go. You've got to uproot it. You've got to dig it up. Lord have mercy, that thing been dying. It's dead. Lord have mercy, go and root up. You know what I did with those trees? Lord have mercy, I told them, get them out of there and give me something I don't have to maintain. Give me something real pretty, something small, something real pretty. Hallelujah. I don't have to why I don't have to do nothing. Lord have mercy. And I looked up this, this spring and it just came up. I said, oh, yeah, that looked real nice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what the Lord will do. That thing that has died, that thing that has worried you, he'll cause you to uproot it. Then he'll give you something, Lord, that you can just walk by and you can say, look at what the Lord has done. Lord have mercy. Look at how he has fixed it, how he set it up. But you got to have faith in God got to have faith in God. This is something that cannot be done. When he says have faith in God, I looked it up in the Greek and went to the Amplified Version and what the Word of God says, he says have faith in God consistently. You've got to consistently have faith in God. You can't be up and down and in and out. You've got to make sure that you have faith in God. As I hasten to the finish line, the question today is, do you have faith in God? Jesus spoke to his disciples. There was a young man that needed to be healed. And his father came to the disciples and they could not heal him because their faith was not at the level that it needed to be. Y'all remember that? And Jesus came and the disciples asked who did sin and they said, well, nobody sinned but it was for the glory of God. There's some things that are simply for the glory of God. I was asked this week, does God heal everybody? I was asked this week about divine healing. And I began to share with the person that I believe that God can heal everybody. That's the reason we pray. But God is a sovereign God. And this is the reason we have to pray to him. Sovereign simply means he reigns. He's an authority. Lord have mercy. He rules. And because he rules, I'm going to talk to the one who rules. I'm not going to have faith necessarily just in the doctor, but I'm going to have faith in God. 
Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Saints, this is the time in order for us to do what God has called us to do because the church was not doing. It was not walking in the opportunity that God had established for it. And Jesus speaks to them and lets them know that you must have faith in God. When the devil comes and speaks to you and tells you that you can't, you've got to say, I can because I have faith in God. The Bible tells us and instructs us as Jesus was tempted, he was tempted in all points, and the Bible says that he was tempted. And what the word of God says is that every time Jesus was tempted, Jesus rose up and said, it is written. And if you go back to that passage of scripture, I believe it's in the fourth chapter of Matthew when Jesus was tested, Jesus says it is written, every verse that he quoted was from the book of Deuteronomy. It's the book of the second law. It's the book, and Lord have mercy, and I begin to think, what it, do we really know the word of God like Jesus knew the word of God? Do we really understand the word of God? Are we really searching the word of God? I sent out an email about a couple weeks ago asking y'all how y'all doing on y'all reading. I didn't get one person send me a note back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Lord have mercy. They, they was reading, Pastor. Is that what was going on? Hallelujah. But we got to read our Bible every day. You got to take some time with God. Saints, we are in a collision course with destiny. I sat here yesterday and I was sitting next to Bishop Hill and the building began to shake. And I could see the pole that holds the projector. It was going up and down. And I said, what is going on? And I could feel it under my feet. And Bishop turned to me and he says, that feels like an earthquake. And I said to myself, what is he talking about? earthquake only happened in California <laughs> and sure enough before church was over we found out it was an earthquake 14 miles away but it shook everything and I talked to my daughter she said dad I felt it all the way up in Mount Pleasant I was like wow and I read an article as I close, I read an article about it last night in the newspaper. And the woman was in her house, and she said things were shaking, and she came outside, and she was so disturbed, and she turned to her neighbor who was out doing his gardening. And the neighbor was out doing his gardening, and she said, did you feel that? And he said, yes, and turned right around and just kept on gardening. <laughs> Unconcerned, and I said, we are living in a day that we have just totally forsaken God, that we don't even recognize when God speaks. Saints of God, it's time to have faith in God. It's time to seek God with a fervency. It's time to seek God because the enemy is coming and he's trying to separate us and cause us to be all by ourselves and feel like we're all by ourselves and we have no victory. But the Bible tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves, come together and build one another up in our most holy faith. We have to build ourselves up in God's word. We cannot talk our way out of this thing. We cannot rationalize ourselves out of this thing. We can't even sing our way out of it. Lord, if we were to have a, a singing thing today, the church would be packed. But how many know singing is not going to give us our deliverance? It's the word of God. That's the only thing that's going to set us free is God's word. Having faith in God. Having faith in God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Everybody standing on your feet. Praise the Lord. We sung those songs on today. And the purpose of those songs was so that it would build up your faith to know that I know it wasn't the latest and greatest, but sometimes it's good to go back to those old songs. Go back to our heritage. Hallelujah. I know y'all want to raise your hand and, you know, close your eyes. Hallelujah, you know. Hallelujah. But sometimes we need to go back to the songs that brought us over. We must never forget how God has delivered us and changed our lives. Have faith in God. You perhaps are battling something today in your mind. And the Lord did not want you to hear this message, but I believe that this message is for us. It's a timely word that we've got to have faith in God. Sometimes we battle even to get to church. It's, why is it that when it's time to go to church, it's the greatest fight we ever had in our life? 
But when we got to go to work, we're up early, praise God. We're drinking our coffee, our latte. Amen. We're having us a good time. Get to work early. Hallelujah. But when it's time to go to the house of the Lord, it's a fight. Come on, find your shoes. Amen. Just a, a battle going on. Oh, that's because we're in a spiritual warfare. And the devil does not want you to get to the house of the Lord to hear the word of God. But I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the things, into the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared for them to them that love the Lord. Do you love him today? Just lift your hands up and worship him. Have faith in God. Some of us have children that are on the rampage. They don't want to do the things of God. They want to do what they want to do. We're in a world. We're in the world as if it were in the book of Judges. The book of Judges tells us that everybody did what was right in their own eyesight. We're living in that world today that everybody has grown and everybody thinks they have the answer, but everybody is still going in the wrong direction. And they're walking away from God, but we have to turn people to God. We have to let people know that you've got to have faith in God. My hope is built on nothing less. We've got to have faith in God. Father God, as we raise our hands to you, I want to thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. I want to thank you for your grace. I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for your peace. I want to thank you for your understanding. Lord, I want to thank you that you love me even when I didn't love myself. I want to thank you, Lord, even for the story of the fig tree. I want to thank you, Lord, that you showed us that you loved us even that much, oh God, that you allowed that fig tree to have several opportunities to bring forth fruit. And even in the bringing forth fruit, all it had was leaves. It was walking in deception. Somebody today says, well, I'm doing all I know to do, but yet they're not doing anything. But God, I pray now that you would cause us to shake the leaves off the tree, oh God, that we would see the barrenness in our life. We would see, oh God, that we're not bringing forth the fruit that you have called us to. And God, that you would cause us, oh God, to give us one more chance. Oh God, that you would dig around our situation, oh God, and you would put a hedge of protection around us. And you would cause us to seek your face, oh God, as never before. For you said, if we call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. And we call on your name right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. God, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hitherto have we asked nothing in your name, but we ask, O oh God, that your joy may be full. God, we ask today. We ask for peace today. We ask for love today. We ask for joy today. We ask for understanding today. God, we ask that you would help us, O oh God, to put our trust in you, O oh God, to hide us behind your cross, O oh God, to let us know that we are your children. We are the sheep of your pasture. God, somebody has walked away trying to find solutions, oh God, outside of you. But I hear in your word, oh God, if we call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. We call on your name today, for there is healing in your name. There is deliverance in the name. The name that is above every name. His name is Jesus. Come on and help me call Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, it's not just grandmama's Jesus, but hear my Jesus. Jesus, you're my Lord, you're my Savior, and we bless your holy name. We give you glory today. We give you praise, oh God. Every yoke be destroyed, every burden be lifted in the name of Jesus. Sit and take your hands off of God's property in the name of Jesus. God, let there be peace in the home in the name of Jesus. To straighten up, oh God, those wayward children, oh God. Let there be peace, oh God. We speak peace now, oh God. God, the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus help the parents oh God to walk in the authority oh God that you have given them oh God let there be peace now oh God let there be peace among the husband and wife let there be peace among the children let there be peace hallelujah in the church let there be peace oh God on our job let there be peace oh God in our mind have faith in God Lord I'm trusting in you Lord I'm believing in you oh God in the name of Jesus. No other help I know. Thank you today, oh God. Come on and thank him. Thank him for his deliverance. Thank him for his
his grace. Thank him for his mercy. Lord, we plead with you. We're asking you, O oh God. We're believing you, O oh God, that you have given us the authority. Thank him today, O oh God. Come on, Zion. Praise him today. Come on and give him glory. We give him honor today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that we have faith in God. God, we thank you now. We bless you now. Hallelujah. Does anyone need prayer for healing today?